Hi, and uh, welcome to this next video where we introduce gradient boosting. At least in this video, we'll just give the basic introduction and then we'll continue to build on top of it in the next video. So gradient boosting is really an extension of uh, the boosting paradigm that we already saw in the previous videos. So, so boosting we introduced as, I guess, a meta type of algorithm where the idea is that you already have some learning algorithm that may perform reasonably well, and then you're gonna take it and build a new one on top of it. So use it as a subroutine to build something even better. And so we always have a base learning algorithm A, and this base learning algorithm uh, has a base hypothesis set H that it outputs hypotheses from. Now, the boosting template is in general to run this base learning algorithm multiple times, typically not on the same data set, right? So change the data set so it'll output something different. And then it's going to output a hypothesis for each of these T iterations, right? So we have hypotheses H1 to HT. And now somehow you compute some weights, alpha one to alpha t, one for each of these hypotheses. And then at least for classification type problems, uh, what we saw was that then you would use a weighted majority vote amongst these simple hypotheses uh, to determine what label you want to predict. So basically we take all these simple hypotheses that we assume output labels between minus one and one. We multiply each of the predictions by uh, the corresponding weight. And then uh, we sum it all up and take the sign. So this is just a weighted majority of their predictions. Right, so this is the voting classifier that we looked at. And we saw this at a boost in the last two videos. We looked at Adaboost boost as a concrete example of this, uh, where you know, there's a very concrete way of choosing these, uh, these weights alpha t. And there's a very concrete way of uh, determining what, what is the data set that we train on. Right. So the basic idea was that you initialize some weight on each of the points. Initially, it's the uniform weight. And in each of these iterations, you run this base learning algorithm to minimize this weighted zero one loss according to this weight in this iteration, dt. If this finds a hypothesis ht, you compute the quality of it, its error, which is just the, the weighted zero one loss, right? So the number of mistakes that you make, uh, where you weigh each mistake by the probability mass of that example. You compute this constant alpha t depending on this error. And then you update the weights for the next iteration and keep going, right? So this is what we looked at in, in the previous video. And when we ran at a boost <clears throat> with the base learning algorithm being just decision stumps, and if we had this data set up here, uh, then we would see that maybe in the first iteration, it finds this decision stumps that classifies everything on the left blue and everything on the right red. And so in the second iteration, it reweight the points. Some of them are more important now than others. The ones we've made mistake on have a higher weight. You find a new hypothesis and you keep going. And finally, you return this weighted majority of uh, these three uh, symbol hypotheses, these symbol decision stumps, creating this type of decision boundary that we see here in the picture that actually classifies all the training data correctly after just three rounds of, of training. Okay, so this is all uh, what we've seen in the previous video. Now, our, our offset here is that there are some issues with this adaboost, some things that uh, you might want to change. And for instance, in the analysis of Adaboost in the previous video, what we actually saw was that what Adaboost is kind of minimizing is this exponential loss, right? So it's actually, it's really kind of minimizing the average of all the training examples of e to the minus the label times the prediction before taking the sign. So this is the prediction, uh, this is supposed to be before taking signs, it's just the weighted majority uh, of the weighted answers of all the different hypotheses, all weighted by this alpha t and the prediction, but not taking a uh, sign yet. So uh, we didn't explicitly say that this is the loss we're minimizing, but it actually showed up in the proof, right, where we upper bounded the zero one loss by this exponential loss in the analysis for how long it would take before Adaboost got zero uh, training error. So really Adaboost can be thought of as minimizing this exponential loss. Uh, and maybe this is not the loss function that you're actually interested in minimizing, right? Uh, in many cases, this we've never used this in any of the previous uh, learning algorithms we discussed. We never use this exponential loss as the as the loss function that we're interested in, um, right? We also only saw at a boost for binary classification, where you take the sign here of this weighted majority. What if you want to do regression instead, right? How how does should one change at a boost if one wants to just predict the value instead? Right. Um, what if this is with least squared loss? How do we adapt the algorithm to do that? And what if we are perhaps interested in uh, outputting probabilities for being in the class one, where maybe we would do something like this, apply the sigmoid function like we did in, uh, in logistic regression, where we want to take sigmoid of maybe this, this weighted predictions of all these uh, base classifiers, 
Now, what if we wanted to train, use this add a boost idea together with uh, with such predictions? And in this case, well, maybe some type of negative log likelihood type of loss would make more sense. So it's not at all clear how to adapt add a boost to any of these situations, right? So, so this, uh, this is what we'll try to address here, which is the idea of gradient boosting. So a gradient boosting is, I guess, an alternative boosting method. And, uh, it, and one of the benefits of it is that it allows arbitrary loss functions, not just this is exponential loss. And the basic idea in gradient boosting is that we use regression trees as the base learner, uh, not decision trees. So we use regression trees that output values. So I think I'll try to at least introduce this gradient boosting through a simple example first. And the simple example is, let's say we just want to do regression. And which means that the output value will be outputting is just going to be a weighted average or the, a weighted combination of the outputs of each of these individual learners that we train each of these regression trees that we that we learn. So uh, in regression, right, the in sample error, as you know, is just the average overall training examples of the squared difference between the between the prediction and the true label yi. Right. So this is the in sample error that we want to minimize. And so, so let's look at this problem, right? So we have, uh, we output a value that's a combination of the prediction of all the hypotheses trained so far, and we wanna minimize this least squared loss. So, so maybe here's some example data, right? So let's say we've collected five training examples, uh, the feature vector size one up to X5, and they have different labels, 500, 650, 800, 900, and 1150. So these are the different training examples. So, what you would do now is, right, um, well, the first step you want to try to do, right, we want to train a regression tree. So the most natural first step is, of course, well, train a regression tree to minimize the least squared loss on this data, right? What else could we do? This seems like the very best thing to start out with. So that's just what we're going to do. Just going to train the regression tree to minimize the least squared loss on this data here. You know, so maybe you train a tree and um, what you get is, it, you know, it looks at all the data, it builds the regression tree. And maybe, you know, maybe the data set is really large. And so the predictions are not exact, right? So maybe the regression tree that you end up with makes some mistakes on some of the training data examples, right? So for instance, the prediction on X1 might be 450, whereas up here it's it's 500. Uh, so, and, and, you know, also the prediction on X2 could be 500. Up here it's supposed to be 650. So you make some mistakes, right? Of course, you would only get these predictions if the data set was actually larger than this, right? So we could easily imagine that there's more data available and because you cannot, the tree is not large enough to make a perfect prediction on every uh, single training example, you'll, you'll make some mistakes, right? So these are not the exact uh, values you're supposed to predict. So of course, right, what we could look at is the, the mistakes, right? These are the values that we're going to square. Uh, so here, I guess I wrote the label first, uh, the label minus the prediction. So here, these are the values, right, that we would, in the loss function, we would square all these values. <clears throat> Right, so it's just what is the true label minus what is the prediction? So this case is 50 in this case, 150 minus 200 minus 50, 150. Right? So these are kind of in some sense the residuals, if you will, between our prediction and the true label. So these are our mistakes and these are the ones that we square. So the boosting step now is right. And in boosting in general, we want to train again right, on a new data set. So the basic idea here is in boosting is always we train another uh, base learner in this case, a high H2. And then we're going to sum their predictions, right? Maybe there's weighing, but for now, let's just not put a weight, right? So in some sense, we're going to train, we have, we're going to train another one and the new prediction that we're going to make is going to be the sum of the two previous predictions, right? This is the following the boosting template. Now, if we do this, right, what would be a good H2, right? So we already trained H1, it makes some predictions. Um, what would be the optimal H2, right? what predictions should the really good H2 uh, make such that this sum here is useful. Right? So this f of x, the new f of x is closer to yi. And now the obvious thing is that, well, the best H2 we could, uh, we could have is one that exactly on every point xi uh, predicts the label, which is the, the residual, the difference between the true label and the prediction of H1, right? So, so what we would like H2 to do is if I feed it X1, it should output Y1 minus the prediction of the first hypothesis, the first regression tree on X1, right? Because this is the mistake that we're making. And if I add 
H2, if I have an H2 that actually predicts this value and I add it to H1, then I'm going to perform much better, right? In particular, if, if I manage to train a regression tree H2 that perfectly gets these new labels right, then since we're adding the prediction of H1 and H2, if H2 actually gets the prediction perfect, it's going to predict the, the difference between the, the true label and uh, the previous prediction. And so all of this just becomes the true label. Right, so that's the basic idea here, right? That we want to like to train on, on new data where the labels are the residuals. So the mistakes that we made um, when we trained the first hypothesis. Right, so this is the second hypothesis. Okay, so again, right? So let's say we trained the first hypothesis. It made these predictions uh, that are a little bit off. So these are the residuals, 50, 150, minus 200, minus 50, 150. So now we're gonna train on data where X1 has the label 50, X2 has the label 150, X3 has the label minus 200. And so if we train on this data, right, this, this next hypothesis that we're gonna train H2, uh, might come pretty close to this, right? Might not be perfect. So maybe predicts 80 on the first one, 120, minus 200, zero, 100. You know, this is all reasonable values to predict. And so if we do now, uh, the new mistakes, right, between the prediction and the true label, then we get to subtract off both, like the new prediction is 450 plus 80, right, so the mistake is now 500 minus 450 minus 80, and again here, right, 650 minus 500 minus 120, and so on, right, so we can just kind of add this H2, and now we have some new mistakes that are hopefully smaller than before, right, so now the mistakes are something like minus 30, 30, minus 50, and 50. And so the general idea is just when we train the next one, then we just keep going, right? We know that, okay, now after I've trained two trees, my prediction would be H1 of X1 plus H2 of X1. So the mistake is Y1 minus H1 of X1 minus H2 of X1, right? That would be the mistake that you make. And this is what we train H3 to fit, right? So we train H3 with these labels instead, right? Because if H3 then is perfect, then we would get all the labels correct. So then we just keep going for t iterations and in the t iteration, the label that we'll be using is the true label minus the prediction that we would make if we only had the t minus one previous uh, hypotheses, right? Because we're always gonna return the sum of them as our estimates, right? So this is the general uh, template that we'll be following, right? So, so I guess in more pseudocode for iteration two to t, we train a regression tree ht to minimize the least squared loss where the training data is the same feature vectors. The labels are the true labels minus the current prediction of the trees that we've already trained so far. Right? So we're kind of training on the residual uh, label, the mistake that we make. So maybe one can think of it as, you know, you make a first prediction, uh, this gets us a little bit closer to the target Y. Then when we train the next one, uh, we're training the second one to fit the, the gap between where we are now and, and the target. So when we add it up, we get a little bit closer, the third one, we get a little bit closer. We might we might overshoot the target, and then we keep going like this, right? So every time, uh, we always try to fit the uh, the difference between the the current position and the true label y, right? And that's the basic idea, like a goal for always getting closer and closer to uh, to its target. Okay, so that's the basic uh, gradient boosting algorithm, and uh, we're gonna make a few tweaks to it before we're done, and. One tweak here is, as you can see, kind of on the picture with the golfer, you know, maybe you overshoot the target sometimes, right? So there's a risk of overstepping the target when we add the next hypothesis. And so in general, uh, one typically adds a learning rate to this whole uh, algorithm. So we have a learning rate eta. And then the basic idea is that when we add a new hypothesis, we still train it with the correct, uh, with this uh, residual uh, label. So we try to fit it, uh, but then when we add it, we don't add it with a coefficient of one. So we don't just sum up the predictions, but we add it with a coefficient of eta. So let's try to say, say to go over it, what this means. So basically with the first regression tree, uh, we just minimize to minimize, we train it to minimize the squared loss. And the first one, we're just gonna set a, a coefficient of one just to start out. So that one we use as it is. But then the remaining ones here, we're going for iteration two to capital T the tree that we train is still trained to minimize. And now we, uh, each of these hypotheses that we trained before has a weight, alpha j. So we just look at what is the previous prediction uh, of the 
T minus one trees that are constructed so far, what do they predict? Just take the, the residual, so the true label minus the current prediction. I train to fit this. And now where we before would have just added HT, now we give it a small learning rate of eta, and then we uh, basically add eta times HT. So even though it's supposed to predict the rest of the way from where we are now to the true target, uh, just to avoid overshooting too much, we, we introduce the small learning rate that uh, that we don't go as far as we as this tells us to go. And I guess typical practical values of eta could be something like 0 0.1, but this is something that you could always use a validation set to try multiple different values of eta at the same time and pick the one that works best. And then of course, the final hypothesis is this weighted uh, combination of, uh, of these individual regression trees. Okay. So already with this, if you run it uh, on the California housing data set, so it's a classic data set uh, with a learning rate of 0 0.1, what you see here out on the x-axis is the number of iterations of gradient boosting. So basically how many of these trees did I combine so far? Uh, and, and these trees have been trained with a maximum depth of five. Uh, so just train them. And what you see here is um, there's a training loss. So, so this is just the, the least squared loss and all the training data. And then we also set aside a small validation data set. We took aside 20% of the data. And then we plotted what the performance was on this validation data set. And as you can see, actually, it also decreases steadily with the number of iterations of gradient boosting. And, and also, maybe one thing worth mentioning is that it's much better than just training a single regression tree. So that's what we have up here in the beginning, right? The loss is much higher here, both on the training data set and on the validation set. than if we train multiple regression trees uh, using this, always trying to fit the residual and then using a small learning rate as well. Yeah, so it's uh, so actually it works really well in in practice. Okay, so that's the the at least the first version of of uh, gradient boosting. Now uh, we're going to make a small modification to it, just to as such this is a really nice algorithm if it's uh, least squared loss you're fitting, uh, you're trying to minimize, but just in order to actually present the final algorithm uh, in the next video, we we'll just make a small tweak to this just to uh, you know have it fit the final template that we'll see in the in the next uh, video. So so all that we're going to do is that we're going to say, okay, here in the beginning, before I start out, the first hypothesis is not going to be a full regression tree to minimize least squared. Instead, it's just going to be a constant function. So we're just going to return the best constant value uh, that fits the, that minimizes the least squared loss, right? So So H1 is just going to be a simple function that always returns the same constant. We just need to figure out what that constant should be. So the first one minimizes the least squared loss that picks the constant that just minimizes the least squared loss and we use the constant one here. And uh, maybe you remember from previous uh, videos, but if I wanna minimize the least squared loss and I have n training examples with labels yi, then the best constant prediction I can make is the average prediction. And this is what, this is the minimizer of the least squared loss, it's just the mean. So, so this is very simple, right? When you start out, you just compute the mean of all the labels. And this is the constant that you're going to always return uh, using H1. And you're also always gonna set this alpha one to be one so that you actually return the constant and not some scaling of it. So that's the, the first step. So the mean was the minimizable for least squared loss. That's why we pick this one. Okay. So that's the that's the algorithm that we are uh, that we're going to use, and uh, this is this is the gradient boosting algorithm, at least for the uh, case of uh, least squared loss, and then we'll try in the next video to generalize this to all the loss functions. Right. So let's end here and then continue in the next video.